Welcome everybody to today's uh, WellMed Institute Deepen webinar. We are very happy that we'll have Sohrab Kurosh speak for us to us about the seven valleys of Baha'u'llah, reformation of mysticism and outline of Baha'i theology. To give a little bit of introduction, I'm not going to cover the WellMed Institute very quickly, but for those who don't know, we are an agency of the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of the United States. We've been around 22 years, and we have, in that period of time, had over 11,000 people from 122 courses, uh, countries rather, take our courses. So we've had really quite a vigorous program that continues to grow and expand, and we now have an agreement with a seminary that people at that seminary can take our courses for credit, some of our courses for credit. So we're very excited about that development, and we'll be announcing more about that in the upcoming weeks. To introduce Dr. Sohrab Kurosh, a man of many talents, as you will see from his various degrees. Currently, he's the vice president and senior environmental scientist for an environmental consulting and engineering company in Texas. Previously, he's been on the faculty of the University of Texas Southwest Medical School. His background includes a master's degree in mechanical engineering and a bachelor's degree as well, an MA in psychology, uh, a degree in aerospace engineering, focusing on rocket design, so he can fly into space, I suppose, or at least he can help us do so, if he were so inclined, uh, and a PhD in biomedical engineering and a Juris Doctorate in Environmental Law. So he has a law degree, he has medical degrees, he has engineering degrees, he has psychology degrees, and uh, he has many of us beat in terms of the diversity of his uh, educational background. Of course, all of that allows him to think about topics very broadly and very deeply. He's authored and published various books and articles on Baha'i subjects and papers in engineering and medical journals as well. And of course, has also lectured at international conferences and Baha'i conferences. So we're very pleased today to have Dr. Sohrab speak to us about the Seven Valleys. So we'll now turn the broadcast over to Dr. Sohrab. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Stockman, for your introduction and for your kind words. I'm very happy to be here with you this afternoon and uh, share with you uh, our webinar subject, the uh, Seven Valleys of Baha'u'llah, Reformation of Mysticism and the Outline of Baha'i Theology. Uh, Shoghi Effendi stated that, that the Baha'i faith, like all other divine religions, is fundamentally mystic in character. Its chief goal is development of the individual and society through acquisition of the spiritual values and powers. He characterized the seven valleys as a treatise that may well be regarded as Baha'u'llah's greatest mystical composition. Uh, dictionary uh, definition of uh, uh, mysticism uh, has been uh, several definitions uh, given for mysticism uh, and uh, a religious practice based on belief that knowledge of a spiritual truth can be gained by praying or thinking deeply, uh, experience of mystical union or direct communion with ultimate reality reported by mystics, the belief that direct knowledge of God, spiritual truth, or ultimate reality can be attained through subjective experiences. Uh, also, uh, mystical uh, definitions of mystical are given as immediate consciousness of the transcendent or ultimate reality or God, belief in the existence of realities beyond perceptual or intellectual apprehension, and pursuit of communion with ultimate reality through direct experience, intuition, or insight, engagement in practices that nurture direct experience. Uh, Evelyn Underhill claimed by some to be the foremost authority in, on mysticism in the English-speaking world in her 500-page book on mysticism defined mystics mysticism as the methodology and practice for transition from the life of sense to the life of the spirit. She states, mysticism is seen to be a highly specialized form of the search for reality for heightened and completed life, 
which we have found to be a constant characteristics of the human consciousness. It is largely prosecuted by the spiritual spark, the transcendental faculty, which though the life of our life remains below the threshold in ordinary man, emerging from its hiddenness in the mystic, it gradually becomes the dominant factor of his life. Uh, regarding the station of the seven valleys among the writings of Baha'u'llah, Shori Effendi states, to these two outstanding contributions to the world's religious literature that he uh, later on will see that he calls Hidden Words of Baha'u'llah and the uh, Book of Seli to Kitab e Iran, uh, was added during the same period, a treatise that may well be regarded as his greatest mystical composition, designated as the Seven Valleys, in which he describes the seven stages which the soul of the seeker must needs traverse ere it can attain the object of its existence. The Seven Valleys is among the early writings of Baha'u'llah. There are indications that it might possibly be the first of the major writings of Baha'u'llah, the uh, Kitab Iran and the hidden words of Baha'u'llah during the period of Baghdad. Uh, it is the best known of the mystical writings of Baha'u'llah, followed by the Four Valleys and the Gems of Divine Mysteries. Baha'u'llah's writings are characterized by different forms and styles, each suitable for the content and purpose of its revelation. If a tablet or treatise was addressed to a particular person, a special culture group, cultural particularities, and language of that person or group were taken in consideration. Uh, in this respect, Baha'u'llah states, at one time we spoke in the language of lawgiver, at another in that of the truth seeker and the mystic, and yet our supreme purpose and highest wish had always been to disclose the glory and sublimity of this station. The Seven Valleys half body was revealed after Baha'u'llah's return from Soleimaniya to Baghdad in March 1856. The exact date of its revelation is not known. And it was revealed in response to questions of Sheikh Muhyiddin, the Ghadi or judge of the Khanirin who was the spiritual leader of the Ghadiriya order of Sufis in Kurdistan. Uh, as you know, Soleimaniye is a town in northern Iraq uh, where Baha'u'llah uh, spent uh, two years uh, from April of 1854 to March of 1856 in that area, uh, originally in the mountains of Sargalu, which are mountains close to Soleimaniye, and then uh, later on, by the invitation of the uh, leaders of the uh, Sufi orders of uh, Soleimaniye, he moved to the town of Soleimaniye and he was revered and admired by the Sufi leaders there. Uh, the people of Soleimaniye at that time uh, in Kurdistan of Iraq usually uh, are uh, Sufis of uh, three orders of Sufism, Qadiriyye, Khalidiyye, and Naqshbandiyye. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, etymology of the uh, name Sufi and uh, also the history of uh, these orders, I have written extensively in uh, my book, the, the uh, surface study notes for the seven values of Baha'u'llah. You might uh, uh, refer to that book if you are interested to know more about this subject. Uh, seven values is in Persian language, except for the five paragraphs of the preamble, which are in Arabic and in mystical style using the contemporary mystical allegorical terminology and quoting Quran verses, Islamic traditions, ahadith, and poems from the Persian and Arabic mystic poets. The Seven Valleys was originally called Resali Suluk, which means the treatise on treading the path. But sometimes after its revelation, possibly because of the subject matter, and Baha'u'llah's statement in the book, Baha'u'llah states, 
the stages that mark the wayfarer's journey from the abode of dust to the heavenly homeland are said to be seven. Some have called the seven valleys and others seven cities. It, because of that, it became known as the seven valleys. The name of the seven valleys that are mentioned in the book originally came from an epic poem of Faridadina Attar called uh, Mantabotair. The name of Attar's book has been rendered into English as a speech of the birds, the conference of the birds, language of birds, or dialogue of birds in several different translations. The uh, Attar was uh, a prominent uh, uh, Sufi master uh, and a, a mystic poet, very famous in uh, Iran and among the mystics. Uh, he was uh, named Attar, uh, comes from the, uh, is means uh, seller of Atr. Atr means fragrance or perfume. Uh, this was the professional name of the uh, uh, perfume and uh, medicine merchants in Iran. He is author of several books, uh, among them the collection of his poems, Divan Attar, uh, and the work uh, about the uh, work and uh, uh, life of the Sufi saints called Taskaratol Olya. But his most uh, uh, prominent book, famous book is Mantavotel, the name Mantavotel, uh, the name of uh, book is uh, taken from a surah of uh, Quran, surah 27, verse 15, uh, and uh, is uh, 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 known that in mystical symbolism, the birds represented souls who were able to rise above the material realm or the ab abode of dust and fly in the heaven of mystic knowledge, speaking of a language that ordinary people did not understand. This mystical and often poetic language was symbolically referred to as the language or speech of birds. In his poem book, Mantavotair, Attar presents the story of the journey of a group of birds that decided to go in search of the phoenix, and uh, which in Persian is called Simor. The leader of these birds was Hothod, the lapwing, the messenger of Solomon and queen of Sheba. The, the phoenix uh, is a mythical bird that has been mentioned in ancient myths as bird of magnificent size, color, and wisdom, and uh, which possessed superhuman intellect and wisdom. The Islamic and uh, Sufi traditions posted that the phoenix lived in a mountain off at the uh, end of the world, and uh, he lived uh, for a thousand years, and at the end of the thousand years, he he would ignite a fire uh, from his feathers and would be burned. And from the ashes, another phoenix would rise and continue for another thousand years. Uh, in mystical literature, the phoenix is the symbol of divinity or in some places, the perfect man. It is an immortal being uh, and whenever one dies, another will take his place. So it is a symbol of the manifestation of God or, or religion of God that will uh, live for about a thousand years. Uh, and then uh, it burns down and from its ashes, a new religion or a new manifestation of God is raised. Originally uh, in this story, of Attar's uh, Mantavotair or the speech of birds. Originally, a great number of birds started on this journey and to go through the valleys and pass through seven valleys. In passing through each valley, a number of birds perished or left the group and dropped out of the search. At the end, after they crossed the last valley and reached to the abode of Simor, Phoenix, only 30 birds remained. In Persian, C means 30 and more means bird. 
hence Simor is a pun in Persian, as it means both teddy bears and phoenix. At this point, the teddy bears realized that the phoenix they were seeking was in reality the reflection or manifestation of the object of their quest in their united collective soul. The names of the valleys in the seven valleys are valley of search, love, knowledge, unity, contentment, wonderment, true poverty, and absolute nothingness. Uh, the names are, are almost the same as Atars, but the, the order of the uh, valleys is a little bit different in seven valleys. Atars' names uh, of the valleys the stages of the wayfarer's journey along the spiritual path were constantly adopted by Baha'u'llah as a starting point for uh, uh, discourse because of the recipient's familiarity with the relevance or the relevance of the recipient's question to Atar's work. However, the use or mention of mystical or allegorical terminology is not a result of the fact that Baha'u'llah learned from the mystics or followed them. Rather, Baha'u'llah used this terminology so that the recipient and future readers of these treaties could begin from a familiar frame of reference and then be educated and guided on the path of truth. In reality, the Seven Valleys has nothing to do with the bears or their journey, uh, the mystical and the spiritual concepts that are uh, explained in, uh, in the Seven Valleys are totally of a different level of mystical uh, concepts and explanation. Uh, the Seven Valleys was translated into English by Marzia Gale in consultation with her father, Ali Wali Khan in Nabil Dole. The publication date of the first English translation was 1945. The second edition uh, of the Seven Valleys published in 1968 and 1975 by the U.S. Baha'i Publishing Trust. The Seven Valleys is generally considered as a complex mystical treatise guiding the wayfarers in treading the path of spirituality, but it also contains an outline of the Baha'i theology and fundamental concepts for reformation of mysticism. While employing mystical language, Baha'u'llah reforms mysticism by redefining the goal and path of mystical wayfaring, describes many theological concepts and provides an outline of the fundamental principles of Baha'i theology, some of which were unprecedented in the history of the religious discourse. Uh, among them are the absolute transcendence of God, inaccessible and exalted above the comprehension of all created things, even the manifestations of God. The manifestation of God is the ultimate goal of mystical and spiritual quest. The manifestation of God is the Godhead in the human world and the world of creation. The manifestation of God must be recognized by his own self. The unity of the essence of all manifestation of God, which are the appearances of primal will in the world at different times and under different names. The relativity of of the station of firstness and lastness of all manifestations of God. The continuity and progressive process of divine revelation and the relativity of religious truth. The notion that following religious precepts and treading the mystical path, which were traditionally considered as separate and incompatible ways to search for truth are not only compatible, but must be harmonized in the spiritual quest for truth. Baha'u'llah also makes allusions to his own divine station in the Seven Valleys. Uh, for example, for the absolute transcendence of God inaccessible to and exalted above comprehension of all created things, even manifestation of God, Baha'u'llah states, for God is, in his essence, holy above ascent and descent, entrance and exit, 
He had through all eternity been free of the attributes of human creatures and ever will remain so. No man had ever known him. No soul had ever found the pathway to his being. Every mystic knower had wandered for far astray in the valley of knowledge of him. Every saint had lost his way in seeking to comprehend his essence. Sanctified is he above the understanding of the wise. Exalted is he above the knowledge of the knowing. Uh, that is paragraph 57, uh, page 22 of the Seven Valleys. Fortunately, uh, there was a, a beautiful tablet of Baha'u'llah that was uh, translated by a uh, beloved guardian. Uh, a part of it I have quoted here, the conceptions of the devoutest of mystics, <clears throat> the attainment of the most accomplished amongst men, the highest praise which human tongue or pen can render are all the product of man's finite mind and are conditioned by its limitations. 10,000 prophets, each a Moses, are thunderstruck upon the Sinai of their search at his forbidding voice, thou shalt never behold me. Whilst the myriad messengers, each as great as Jesus, stand dismayed upon their heavenly thrones by the interdiction mine essence thou shalt never apprehend. There is a beautiful discourse in the Persian mystical poetry uh, that a poet said that when you travel and come across, uh, come close to the Sinai mountains, say, don't say, oh God, show thyself to me because it's not worth asking and being rejected by the voice that thou shalt never uh, behold me. Another poet said that when you get to Sinai, say, O oh God, show thyself to me. How sweet it is to hear from him, whether you see me or you shall never behold me. Uh, to indicate that even the manifestations of God do not comprehend God, he in the Seven Valleys stated, how can utter nothingness gallop its steed in the field of pre-existence or a fleeting shadow reach to the everlasting sun. The friend had said, but for thee, we have not known thee. And the beloved had said, nor attain thy presence. Unfortunately, this is a free rendering of the concept in this translation. Uh, I have uh, presented here my understanding of this uh, paragraph uh, that reads, how can utter nothingness gallop steeds in the field of pre-existence or a fleeting shadow reach to the everlasting sun? The friend or the Lord of but for thee, Habib al -Olak, said we had not known thee and the beloved of O Adnau had said nor attained thy presence. Baha'u'llah states in the half body, Habib al ما عرفناک فرموده و محبوب و عدنا ما بلغناک گفته. حبیب لولاک، لولاک is uh, uh, translated as but for thee. There is a, a tradition, holy tradition in Islam that God told Muhammad that but for thee I would not have uh, created the whole world. That means that I created the world for your sake. And this became an honorific title for Muhammad to be known as Habib al uh, the friend of but for thee. Uh, and also there is a, a, a surah in Quran, that uh, surah of a star, in which there is an instance of revelation to Muhammad that Muhammad is supposedly uh, getting close to the, to the uh, uh, throne of God, but he comes close as, uh, distance of two bowls or even closer. O Adna means even closer. And that also became an honorific title for Muhammad to show how close he was to God. But Muhammad said that uh, 
oh God, I could not know thee as you deserve to be known, and I could not attain your presence. So Baha'u'llah here says that even manifestations of God uh, cannot comprehend the essence of God and cannot attain the presence of God. Therefore, for the Sufi leaders or Sufi uh, wayfarers to come become one with God is not possible. Uh, the following concepts are all presented in first paragraph of the Seven Valleys. The manifestation of God is the ultimate goal of mystical and spiritual quest. The manifestation of God is the Godhead in the human world and the world of creation. Manifestation of God must be recognized by his own self. This is the, the first paragraph of the preamble of the seven valleys. Uh, Praise be to God who had made being to come forth from nothingness graven upon the tablet of man, the secret of pre-existence. Uh, I also uh, uh, presented here my understanding of this, that uh, man here should be with capital M and uh, him should be also with capital H because uh, uh, there are a lot of support in the Baha'i writings uh, for this purpose and uh, I have explained this in uh, detail in the uh, study notes for the seven values of Baha'u'llah. If you are interested, you can uh, uh, refer to that. Uh, the uh, essence of this uh, preamble uh, is uh, the statement of the station of the manifestation of God as the Godhead. Uh, and uh, uh, it must be emphasized that uh, what I have put here in color green and in uh, italics is my own understanding that has no authority lacks any authority or any validity. It is just my understanding that uh, is the man should be here. You know that in uh, Persian uh, and Arabic, the concept of the uh, capital uh, letters, uh, the use of capital letters in the beginning of proper nouns to distinguish them from common nouns uh, does not exist. Uh, therefore, uh, if uh, in English we could present it like that, it would make it uh, make understanding easier. <clears throat> uh, he also, uh, Baha'u'llah also uh, states uh, about the unity of essence of all manifestation of God, which are the appearances of primal will in the world at different times and under different names. And I praise and glorify the first sea, which had branched from the ocean of divine essence, and the first morn, which had glowed from the horizon of oneness, and the first sun, which had risen in the heaven of eternity, and the first fire, which was lit from the lamp of pre-existence in the lantern of singleness. He who was Ahmad in the kingdom of the exalted ones, and Muhammad, amongst the concourse of the near ones and Mahmoud in the realm of the sincere ones. We find the definition of the terms such as kingdom of exalted ones, Malakut al-Alim, the concourse of the near ones, Malay al-Mugharrabin, the realm of sincere ones, Jabarut al-Mukhlisin, in other Baha'i writings as well as uh, Ahmad, for example, in the Gospel of John is uh, referred to as Paraclet, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, and uh, Muhammad in Quran, and Mahmoud, uh, we find it uh, in, in the Kitab Aqdas. Uh, again, I don't have time right now to explain this. I refer you to the surface study notes, which uh, extensively uh, references this subject. Uh, he also uh, mentions about the relativity of the stations of manifestations of God and the continuity and progressive process of divine revelation and relativity of religious truth. Uh, so the first two paragraphs 
of the uh, seven preamble to seven valleys, Baha'u'llah presents several important uh, subjects. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, about the nature of manifestation of God, the essential unity of the manifestation of God, and the, uh, the manifestation of God's are the, the, in their tablet or their soul of manifestation of God is graven with the secret of pre-existence and is taught the mysteries of divine utterance and is made luminous book. He is made to speak from the apex of eternity with the wondrous ways in excellent temple. So uh, this uh, emphasis on manifestation of God uh, uh, has uh, been mentioned by some uh, uh, Baha'i scholars as manifestation of theology, manifestational theology in Baha'i faith. Uh, <clears throat> reformation of mysticism Practical mysticism has been historically defined and understood as the way of life and practice which was aimed at enabling a person to experience direct communion and eventual union with God that this union can be attained through subjective experience. Mystical experience was also defined as immediate consciousness of the transcendent or ultimate reality of God pursuit of union with God through direct experience and engagement in practices that nurture direct experience. Uh, again, uh, mysticism is divided to two uh, schools of mysticism. One is practical, which is championed by Attar, and the other one is theoretical, which is championed by Muhyiddin Arabi. Again, I don't have time to go into this. You can refer to to the self-study notes, and I have explained uh, this uh, two schools. Mystics were found in every religion and every part of the world, but under the teachings and influence of Islam, the mystic way of thought and practice referred to as tarilat, which means the path or the spiritual discipline for finding and becoming one with truth, God found a more defined form ascetic mystics, Muslims were called Sufis. For etymology of the word Sufi, there are four different uh, etymological uh, explanations are given. I don't have time again, uh, refer you to the book to find that. <clears throat> the preferred or customary procedure was to separate from society, live as a mendicant, or go into seclusion and lead an Anchoritic lifestyle while treading the path of by following, imitating, and emulating a spiritual leader, preferably in a Sufi monastery, to become one with God by achieving the state of annihilation or nothingness, final, and total absorption into God through med medication, uh, meditation, contemplation, and ecstasy. <clears throat> the prevailing attitude was that. Tariqat, trading the path, takes the mystic to a level that he does not need to comply with shariat or religious law. Some Sufis came to believe that following the shariat would prevent them uh, from advancing on the tariqat to achieve the truth, hariqat, and becoming one with God, Masul <clears throat> al-Hariqat. Baha'u'llah did not denounce or reject mysticism, but reformed it by re redefining its goal and its path. He confirmed and promoted mystical approach to religion that is based on the notion and belief that knowledge of religious truth, acquisition of spiritual virtues, personal spiritual development, and transition from the life of sense to the life of the spirit can be gained and accomplished by prayer, study, and meditation on the revealed words. Shoghi Effendi, as we saw, stated that Baha'i faith, like other divine religions, is fundamentally mystic in character. In the Seven Valleys, Baha'u'llah demonstrated that the concept of human beings becoming one with God is a result of vain imagining. 
the absolute transcendence of God, who is inaccessible to and exalted above the comprehension of the all created things, even the manifestation of God. The manifestation of God is the goal, ultimate goal of mystical and spiritual quest. The manifestation of God is the Godhead in the human world and the world of creation. He redefined the tariqat, the mystic path, by stating that the wayfarer must turn away from seclusion and anchoritic life and imitating the leaders and go in search for the beloved, for the truth. Uh, in uh, one, another tablet, uh, in, uh, in his writings in another tablet states, each sect had picked out a way for itself and is uh, clinging to a certain core. Despite manifest blindness and ignorance, they pride themselves on their insight and knowledge. Among them are mystics who bear allegiance to the faith of Islam, some of whom indulge in that which leaded to idleness and seclusion. I swear by God, it lowered man's station and make him swell with pride. Man must bring forth fruit. One who yielded no fruit is in the words of a spirit, that means Jesus, like unto a fruitless tree, and a fruitless tree is fit but for fire. That which the aforesaid persons have mentioned concerning the station of divine unity will conduce in no small measure to idleness and vain imagining. These mortal men have evidently set aside the differences of station and have come to regard themselves as God, while God is immeasurably exalted above all things. He made other statements, uh, oh my brother, journey upon these plains in the spirit of search, not in blind imitation. And uh, on this journey, the traveler abided in every land and dwelled in every region, should not be secluded and search for the truth, the friend, for beloved. He indicated that at this time and the present age, with the appearance of manifestation of God, to search for truth and tread the mystic path, one is not in need for a lamp or Sufi leaders. Sufi leaders were called lamps or lights. He says that at this hour, the morn of knowledge had arisen, and the lamp of wayfaring and wandering are quenched. Uh, these leaders, these Sufi leaders, were taught to provide the light during the night season. The night season is uh, explained in the Baha'i writings, the period between two rising of the sun, or rising uh, period between uh, two manifestations of God, that is the night season. So the Sufi leaders, which were considered the lights, could lead people during the night season, where it was dark, with their light they could lead people on the path of uh, spirituality. But with the rising of the Son of Baha'u'llah, the revelation of Baha'u'llah, the light has uh, come and, and uh, the path is very clear. So Baha'u'llah says that at this hour, the morn of knowledge had arisen, and the lamp of wayfaring and wandering are quenched. To tread the mystical path, instead of following a Sufi leader master in a Sufi monastery, a wayfarer can find the truth by dwelling within the shadow of the tree of knowledge that is recognizing the manifestation of God and study and meditate on his revelation. He says, now forget to Sheikh Muhyiddin he says, now forget them all, that thou mayest learn from the master of love in the schoolhouse of oneness and return unto God and forsake the inner land of unreality 
for thy true station and dwell within the shadow of the tree of knowledge. The uh, master of love is Baha'u'llah, the manifestation of God. The schoolhouse of oneness is his faith and religion. And some Sufi leaders were claiming that they have gone so deep in their inner in Baten uh, that they have passed the inner side of their inner land and they have come one with God. Baha'u'llah here says the inner land of unreality is translation of Baten and Majazi. Majazi means imaginary or unreal. So by attaching Majazi on unreal to that Baten, he states that those people who claim that they have passed their inner uh, uh, station and, and got one with God, they are uh, in according to Baten Majazi may be regarded as the imaginary inner station. It seems that the tree of knowledge here is the manifestation of God. So he says that those people, they thought that they have gotten to the inner land. Their inner land is the figment of their imagination. You better come to schoolhouse of oneness learn from master of love and go under the shadow of tree of knowledge which is the manifestation of god the notion that following religious precepts and treading the mystical path which were traditionally considered as separate and incompatible ways to search for truth are not only compatible but should be harmonized if in the spiritual quest for truth in all those journeys the traveler must stray not the bread of hair from the law, for this is indeed the secret of path and the fruit of the tree of truth. And in all these stages, the, he must cling to the robe of obedience to the commandments and hold fast to the cord of shunning all forbidden, forbidden things, that he may be nourished from the cup of the law and informed of the mysteries of truth. And we see that in the first uh, paragraph of Kitab al-Qas, Baha'u'llah talks about uh, following the commandments and laws and says that the uh, recognition of manifestation of God and obedience to the laws are the twin du duties that are not separable. So one is not acceptable without the other one. Baha'u'llah also makes allusions in Seven Valleys to his own divine station. To Sheikh Muhyiddin, he says, I therefore reveal unto thee sacred and resplendent tokens from the plains of glory to attract thee, thee into the court of holiness and nearness and beauty and draw thee to a station wherein thou shalt see nothing in creation save the face of thy beloved one, the honored, and behold the cre all created things only as in the day wherein none had a mention. And also he says that uh, after uh, discussing several concepts, he says that there is many an utterance of the mystics, seers, and doctors of former times, which I have not mentioned here, since I mislike copious citation from things of the past for quotation from the words of others proved acquired learning not the divine bestowal. And he says that even so much that he has quoted is for the love of the friends. Otherwise, it would not be uh, proper because he could reveal uh, from his divine knowledge instead of uh, referring to the writings of the Sufi or mystic leaders of the past. So, uh, for the study of the Seven Valleys, Shoghi Effendi stated that in the Seven Valleys, Baha'u'llah describes the seven stages which the soul of seeker must needs traverse and it can attain the object of its existence. This indicates that the, whoever is interested in attaining the objects of his existence 
can get help in this process by studying the seven valleys. As Baha'u'llah stated in the Kitab Iran, in every age, the reading of the scriptures and holy books is for no other purpose except to enable the reader to apprehend their meaning and unravel their innermost mysteries. Otherwise, reading with no understanding is of no abiding profit into man. So we have to try to understand many references uh, due to the fact that Seven Valleys contains many references to mystical concepts, the Quran and Islamic theology, and the fact that uh, there are some uh, free approximate rendering of the text, this pro uh, provides a challenge for the studies of Seven Valleys. But Baha'u'llah states that the Seven Valleys are the conditions of Wayfarer's soul. These are not solid or rigid stages. Baha'u'llah stated that the purpose of the revelation of the Seven Valleys was to provide the guidance for wayfarers to traverse through these seven conditions by moving from the abode of dust to the heavenly homeland, to take leave of self and reach the ocean of nearness and union, to attract the wayfarer into the court of holiness, and nearness and beauty and from the earthly homeland to the first heavenly abode in the center of realities. This journey starts when the wayfarer takes the journey from the plane of heedlessness into the realm of being. The plane of heedlessness is a place wherein the people are unaware of their own condition, are complacent and self-satisfied and do not feel a need for search. Baha'u'llah described this condition in the hidden words uh, when he says all oh, ye that are lying as dead on the couch of heedlessness. As we saw, Shoghi Effendi stated that Baha'i faith is fundamentally mystical in character. Therefore, we are all wayfarers treading the mystical path, taking this journey inward from separation and multiplicity to inner state of unity in presence of the beloved as described by Baha'u'llah in, in the hidden words. He says that, turn thy sight unto thyself, that thou mayest find me standing within thee, mighty, powerful, and self-subsisting. So by studying seven valleys, we, we might try to, to see him standing mighty and powerful and self-subsisting. The journey of the wayfarer in the seven valleys is the process of cleansing, purifying, and preparing the soul of man to be able to receive and recognize the words of God and enter to the presence of the manifestation of God in the city of his revelation, thus achieving that blessed and everlasting life that perished not. This is confirmed in a tablet of Baha'u'llah, which defines achieving the goals of the seven valleys. I provided uh, a provisional translation of part of that tablet that is uh, regarding the seven valleys. Mizar Gajan, the Khadimullah, uh, the Emanuences of Baha'u'llah, wrote in response to a believer that asked about the seven valleys. You have mentioned in your letter regarding the Saleh Salut, which was revealed in the Persian language. This trans. Uh, treaties was revealed prior to declaration in vernacular of the people. The reason for its revelation was that the Sunni Muslim, uh, who was both a mystic and a scholar, Sheikh Muhyiddin, sent a letter to most holy presence, that's the presence of Baha'u'llah in Iraq. Therefore, in accordance with the divine wisdom, this treaties was revealed in the manner and style current among the people. In this day, whoever has turned his face and directed his attention towards the most sublime horizon, again, Baha'u'llah, and recognize the truth. The truth is the translation of the word haq, which means God, manifestation of God, and, and revelation of God, has traversed the seven valleys or the seven stations and attained to all that is described therein. For in this revelation, all vain imagining and superstitions are discarded and destroyed. 
after recognizing the truth, all are commended to acquire beneficial knowledge and to abandon baseless traditions and superstitions. We beseech God to enable his servants to achieve to what he wills and desires for them from the wonders of his bounty, his generosity, and his favors. Verily, he is the guardian of those who have turned unto him and Lord of those who are devoted to him. But so if Shoghi Effendi stated that Baha'u'llah described the seven stages which the soul of the seeker must needs traverse and it can attain the object of its existence. And if the manifestation of God is the ultimate goal of mystical and spiritual quest, then as stated in the above tablet, Baha'is who recognize Baha'u'llah have already traversed all the seven valleys. We might ask then, why should the Baha'is study the seven valleys? For answering this question, I first refer you to a part of a prayer from Abdul Baha. O oh God, save us from the limited world and help us to gain admittance to your unbounded world so that we tread in your path. Seek after you and behold your beauty and perfection. So that's the, the essence of the quest of the Baha'is. Therefore, Baha'is are also seekers who desire to tread the path towards the beloved. They traverse the seven valleys in hope of attaining to the object of their existence, the paradise of beholding his beauty and perfection. What should Baha'is do after they traverse the seven valleys? And of the cause of God, George Townsend explained this in his meditation on the seven valleys. And when the seven valleys are traversed to the end, and the goal is won, and thy paradise attained, what will remain for any servant of thine but to begin his journey again and travel on and on through the infinitudes of wisdom and love, passing from light to fuller light, from truth to fuller truth, from beauty to more perfect beauty. Thank you very much, friends. Thank you so much, Solharab. That was an incredible presentation. I have read The Seven Valleys various times and, and always took it to be a kind of mystical text, but I had no idea that Baha'u'llah had so thoroughly explained the basic teachings of the revelation, the manifestation, the concept of God. Uh, I had no idea that those were clearly laid out there uh, in that tablet. And uh, I'm really very impressed by this, this uh, summary and analysis of the text. And I'm very grateful. Thank you very much for doing this for us. Thank Some you. questions are beginning to come in and I need to perhaps get them bigger. Uh, some people are saying thank you and thank you. Um, one question I have while questions are coming in, you quoted Baha'u'llah as saying that he doesn't, he prefers not to quote a lot of people because he prefers to allow the, the divine bestowal to provide the answer. Is this not a hint at his station as a manifestation of God in 1856? And do you see other similar hints in the Seven Valleys? Yes, uh, I uh, had two slides there, uh, two uh, statements, one uh, to uh, Sheikh Muhyiddin, uh, that Baha'u'llah said that I'm going to take you to higher elevations of spirituality. And uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I can, uh, uh, if I could go back, uh, I don't know whether I could go back to those. Uh, uh, yes, here, Baha'u'llah allusion to his own divine station. Uh, he says to Sheikh Mohiyaddin that I therefore reveal unto thee sacred and resplendent tokens from the plains of glory to attract thee into the court of holiness and nearness and beauty and draw thee to a station wherein thou shalt see nothing in creation save the face of thy beloved. So this is one 
very powerful statement. And the other one is that he says that to quote from others is a, a, a proof of acquired learning, not the divine bestowal that he has. So uh, uh, he says that even these things that I have quoted is uh, after the manner of friends and uh, for uh, of difference to the want of man. Yes. Yeah, that's really when you think about it, quite amazing that all I, I suspect I suspect pretty much all of his early writings hint at his station as a manifestation, actually, as well. Um, exactly. Uh, so uh, Iran, there are many many paragraphs and that Baha'u'llah very clearly uh, alludes to his own divine station uh, and uh, uh, even uh, to, the, to the nearness of his declaration, very clearly. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Stephen Bedingfield, who I hope is beginning to find the sun warming the snows up there in Northwestern territories. Um, he says, I understand that the Seven Valleys is in line to be retranslated into English, as the current translation has some problems, especially in the last three valleys. You seem to have touched on this in your comments on the introduction to the Seven Valleys. Can you comment on any general translation issues and or suggest or enter the suggested upcoming translation? Uh, when I uh, uh, started writing the book, I noticed that there were uh, problems with the translation, uh, the preamble, uh, the first paragraph of preamble, uh, which I uh, presented there, uh, the, the changes that I proposed in green uh, uh, color, uh, that was, uh, I sent my uh, surface study notes for the Seven Valleys to uh, World Center, uh, because the Seven Valleys was already uh, printed and uh, existing. And uh, the uh, uh, Secretary of the Universal House of Justice uh, advised me to, uh, I uh, provided a few alternative translations in that manuscript, and they advised me to take them out because they were going to uh, uh, retranslate the Seven Valleys, and this was 2006, and uh, I was waiting for that, and even uh, a few months ago, I uh, sent another email requesting uh, to be advised of the status of the translation. Uh, I think it is coming, and uh, I was advised that my manuscript, those alternative translations are uh, kept uh, in World Center uh, might be, they might be used for uh, preparing the new translation. So we are all awaiting for the new translation. Excellent. Uh, Neda says, thank you for your outstanding learning and inspiration for greater deepening. And certainly we all want to see that happen. And all of us will study the book more deeply as a result of this particular presentation. And I should add, uh, that your study guide that this is based on is available through the Baha'i Distribution Service and uh, is available at the Baha'i Bookstore website. Um, how long, when did it come out? Oh, it came out 2015. So it's just a few years old. Yes. Uh, we, will, we had a link to it in the publicity that went out. Uh, for this on Thursday and we'll put a link also up on our website so that people can easily click through to find the book if they want to purchase it. But you can go to the Baha'ibookstore.org site and, and uh, find it there. Atusa says, thank you. This was most insightful and illuminating. How does one use the framework of exploration offered by the Seven Valleys in one's daily life? Well, uh, I think uh, Baha'u'llah said in that, uh, portion of the tablet that I have uh, presented the uh, uh, translation, provisional translation, that whoever uh, has attained to recognition of Baha'u'llah and is a Baha'i has already traversed 
the Southern Valleys. But Southern Valleys could be used by reading and rereading and studying Southern Valley. It can be used to attain to what, what Baha'u'llah said in the hidden words that we come to realize him standing within us, powerful and uh, uh, yes. So uh, uh, we can use Seven Valleys for uh, increasing our spiritual uh, power and spiritual understanding and uh, walking in the path of spirituality. AK asks this question. In the first three valleys, we are given some idea of instructions regarding the means of progress through them. However, after those planes, I don't seem to see indications of how one continues to make progress. Yes, Baha'u'llah says that the markab or the vehicle for passing through those three valleys, uh, every passing through those valleys needs a, a driving force or a vehicle. Uh, for example, uh, the, the Valley of Love is uh, what is translated as pain, and that pain really is yearning. Uh, because without yearning, we cannot pass through the Valley of Love. Uh, without, uh, uh, and the Valley of uh, Search and Valley of Love and Valley of Knowledge need this vehicle. But after we reach to the end of Valley of Knowledge, where the, the, the person uh, finds the insight and the, the, the uh, love and yearning uh, to go forward, after that, we don't need a vehicle. Uh, it will be driving us and helping us to, to go through the other valleys. Thomas asks this interesting question. When I meditated on the seven valleys, I was impressed by what I interpreted as standards, which should be met before being able to truly go on to the next valley. Um, do you see these standards as well? Yes, uh, at the end of each valley, Baha'u'llah says that when the wayfarer reaches to this station, he then moves to the next valley. Those standards are given in end of each valley. If we go and read them again, we'll find that, that that's the, the point that when the wayfarer acquires those characteristics, reaches to that point, he is able to go to the next valley. Amethyst asks, when will the webinar be available to watch later? And the answer is we probably will have it up on our website in the next 24 hours. It's usually on YouTube pretty quickly. AK also asks this question, what are the steeds that get you through the higher valleys? You don't need a steed for the higher valleys. The, the steed, the, uh, when the, you, you finish the third valley and go to the, to the fourth valley, at that point, you spiritually are so uh, driven and so prepared that you don't need a vehicle or a steed to go through the other valleys. You will, you will be uh, going and moving and making progress through, through contemplation and uh, uh, reading the writings and study the revelation. It will take you through. Laura, uh, Laura Lawrence asks this question. From your lecture, I think you suggested that the movement of mysticism itself began with Islam. Is, is this correct? Uh, no, mystics were found in every religion. There were uh, Jewish mystics, there were Christian mystics, uh, Hindu mystics, and uh, so on. But uh, in Islam, mysticism found form and for, for found a structure. From 8th century on, the uh, master mystics started to define a path and put a framework and a procedure for uh, treading the path. And mysticism found a, a kind of form and pr procedure. And the Sufis, which are Islamic mystics, uh, all followed this. For example, 
there are uh, uh, sects of mystics that think that they can attain that the spiritual level by dancing, so that uh, dancing dervishes are like that. There are some mystics that think that by sitting and contemplating and being quiet and uh, meditating, they can reach to that. The others say that, no, you have to move and dance and, and sing and so on. So uh, mystics uh, have a different paths or procedures for uh, threading the path. Uh, mysticism was uh, then <clears throat> separated to different sects or orders. For example, the uh, mystics uh, in Kurdistan, where Baha'u'llah was, they were of three sects of Qadiriyya, Khalidiyya, and Naqshbandiyya. I have given uh, explanation about all of these in the self-study notes for the seven practices. Very good. Sherry asks, in the quote about the first sun and the first fire and the first morn, what is meant by the sun and the morn and the fire? It's all my, uh, primal will. Baha'u'llah says that the first seed, because uh, in the Baha'i theology, uh, we, we see that uh, God creates the primal will, and primal will is the creator of the rest of the world and the creation. So the first sun, the first sea, is a reference to the primal will. Um, Artemis asks this very interesting question. Uh, do we see any evidence that Sufism was influenced by Baha'u'llah from his time as a Sufi? Uh, we don't have, uh, I haven't seen, maybe there is, I haven't seen a very uh, a strong and clear uh, influence of uh, Baha'i faith in Sufism, uh, but there were many Sufis that uh, they became Baha'is and found Baha'u'llah and, and found the, the spiritual path in uh, practicing the Baha'i faith. But uh, the reverse of it, I am not aware of uh, a very strong influence. Thomas asks a question about the obligatory prayer, the long obligatory prayer, where there are two interesting references to hearts melting by the love of God and our blood boiling in our veins. Are these mystic references, and further, are these standards or not? Uh, I think that needs a, a very long explanation. Yes, they are uh, symbolic uh, uh, things, uh, boiling of blood, and uh, they are symbolic uh, concepts, but uh, uh, it needs a, a, a more... Uh, kind of uh, detailed explanation uh, if uh, if uh, Thomas uh, sends me an email, I might be able to provide some references for him. Yeah, we can, we can forward emails to you, obviously, we can do that. Uh, we've often gotten comments on our YouTube channel also that we forwarded on to the speakers. Thomas also asked this question, he lives in Japan, and do you think it's valuable to read other mystical texts, such as the Zen writings, Zen Buddhist Zazen writings? Yeah. Uh, that quote uh, from Baha'u'llah that said that the, the sun has risen, uh, there is no need for the lights or lamps. Uh, it's always useful and, and uh, beneficial to read other writings uh, of uh, mystics or, or other people, but ultimately the, the sun is present and the light is prevalent in the world. If the ultimate goal of every mystic uh, quest is to reach the, the truth, which is manifestation of God, he has already uh, come and appeared and is there. So if we, we 
uh, read his revelation, that is the shortest path to, to the des desired goal. Stephen asks another question. Can you comment on the Kitabi Akdas verse 36, which seems relevant as it relates to the seven valleys? That verse reads in part, quote, and among the people is he who layeth claim to inner knowledge and still deeper knowledge concealed within this knowledge. Say, thou speakest false. By God, what thou dost possess is naught but husks, which we have left to thee as bones are left for the dogs. Yes, uh, the, uh, some of the uh, mystics claim that uh, <clears throat> they have taken the core or the essence or the meat of Quran and left the skin or the bones for the dogs, which they uh, claim that the dogs were the people who uh, cling to the shariat or the, the laws and they themselves thought that they have reached to their station that they don't need to follow the, the uh, religious precepts. And so uh, uh, one of the uh, mystics uh, has a poem that says the Mazda Quran, the essence of Quran, we have taken the essence of Quran and have thrown the, the skin or shell for the dogs. But uh, Baha'u'llah says that those uh, stations that they assume that they have reached to the, to the bottom, to the, to the inner state, is uh, the majazi, it's, it's imaginary. They, it's a figment of their imagination. And the reality is that the first verse of Kitab Ardas, where he says that, no, knowledge of manifestation of God should come uh, in uh, conformity and harmony with following the laws. Christine asks this question. You stated as is, as is right, written in the Baha'i writings, it is impossible for humans to find the presence of God and that our search should be to attain unity with the manifestation of God. What is your view about praying? Are our prayers directed to God or to Baha'u'llah? Uh, I think uh, this is, uh, we should, I should say in the, in the beginning, uh, now I'm saying it again, that this is my personal view and understanding and it has no validity or authority. But I believe that the manifestation of God is, is the ultimate goal of every human endeavor among them is prayer. The prayer just reaches manifestation of God. Let's see, Thomas asks another question. He's been asking a lot of questions today, which is very good. The introduction makes reference to the seas and the branches from that first sea. Are these all merely references to the manifestations or do they have other meanings? Uh, at the end of that uh, paragraph uh, that he says that the, uh, uh, he sends his praise uh, to the uh, manifestations of God, to, to the primal will, and the manifestations of God, which are the manifestations of primal will, and to their family, and to their successors, and so on. So, uh, like... Uh, this praise also goes to Baha'u'llah and goes to Abdul Baha and to Guardian that are the family or successors of manifestation of God. Uh, I think I understand Sherry's question here. It's a little tricky. She says she's, I guess, become a Baha'i, and when she reads the Seven Valleys, she hasn't attained any of the standards. So she wants to know, I guess, how did she tra traverse the Seven Valleys if she hasn't attained any of the standards? I uh, very humbly suggest that uh, she takes that uh, book, Self-Study Notes for the Seven Values of Baha'u'llah. And uh, my uh, suggestion is that uh, she reads one paragraph of Seven Values and then come to that book. Uh, you, you know that uh, according to the instructions of Universal House of Justice, 
we cannot have the commentary in the same volume with the sacred writings. That's why I could not prepare this as a footnote on the, on the sacred text. So this, uh, the structure of the surface study notes for the seven valleys of Baha'u'llah is that par first paragraph, under the first paragraph, the, the main points or important points are uh, described and explained. So if she reads, for example, the first paragraph of the Seven Valleys and then goes to this book and reads the comments under the first paragraph, then she goes back and reads the same paragraph in Seven Valleys, I think it will help and she will see that things become clear and she can move forward in the valleys. Let's see. Lost track where I am. Okay, there I am. Um, reunion with God from the Valley of Unity. Will this drive you through the latter valleys? Atusa asks this question. Uh, yes. Uh, if, uh, if we uh, go through the, the fifth valley and the sixth valley, then it will end up driving us to recognition of manifestation of God. And if we already have recognized manifestation of God as Baha'is, as George Townsend said in his uh, contemplation uh, on the meditation on the Seven Valleys, it will give us deeper understanding and deeper uh, achievement. Uh, the goal is that what Baha'u'llah says in the Hidden Words, that we try to reach the station that we see him standing within us. And Seven Valley is helping us. And when we go to the Sixth Valley and go through it, it will eventually help us to reach to that station. Thomas is asking a very good question here. He has got a lot of good questions today. It seems to me that the study of the mystic is a solitary journey. And to do this, we have to be separated from our wives and children and from our community. And yet you have quoted that Baha'u'llah has said that is, it is obedience to the laws that is central. So this means reuniting to these other relationships. I just don't see how this is reconciled because it seems like mysticism is so much of an internal, of an individual effort. Well, uh, I, I think I uh, have failed to, uh, to, uh, really uh, uh, explain that Baha'u'llah has redefined the whole goal of mysticism and the practice of mysticism. He said that mystical experience can be achieved and can be uh, had with being a uh, provider, being a positive member of the society, being an active member of society, following the laws and studying the revelation, we can have mystical experience. It is not, he says that in, in that uh, part of uh, tablet that uh, I read that uh, Baha'u'llah said that uh, those mystics that are uh, going into seclusion and uh, and uh, follow anchoritic uh, lifestyle are not doing well. They are not doing what they should do. He says mm -hmm. that are, if a person is not fruitful, as Jesus said, that fruitless tree is good for fire. So Baha'u'llah wants us to be active, positive, contributing members of society, and it is not contradicting with being a spiritual and trying to be uh, having mystical experience. Artemis asks about the deeper mystical link between the Kitabi Agan, the Hidden Words, and the Seven Valleys. They're all considered to be mystical works. So yes. what's the uh, Baha'u'llah said that, uh, I had the quote that he says that once he talked in the language of mystic and once in language of the uh, uh, 
searcher for truth and once in language of lawgiver. But all of these were Baha'u'llah talking. So the link is there. The truth is one, but in different languages. So if uh, you study the hidden words or you study the Kitab Iran uh, and uh, we study the Kitab Aqdas, the most holy book, they are all different facets of same reality. They are different colors of the same light. Christine notes that she used to hear Hand of the Cause of God, Muschlegel, talking about the Seven Valleys many times, and he said that everyone should be able to reach the Valley of Unity, but the three higher valleys are very, very difficult to attain. Yes, of course, uh, I, I cannot uh, be of much help because I'm struggling myself too, so. It's a good answer. Greg asks this question. It is interesting to note that the word Simor means both 30 birds and phoenix in Persian. Deepening our understanding of unity continues to be the main thread of Baha'u'llah's teachings. What meditations have been recommended by Baha'u'llah in this regard? Uh, meditation that is recommended by Baha'u'llah is reading his writings and and thinking and meditating uh, in his revelation. There is a very interesting uh, thing that happens in, in Kitab Iran, the Book of Solitude. Baha'u'llah explains a concept, then he says, ponder. So that means that when we read something in Revelation of Baha'u'llah, we can ponder upon it, we can meditate upon it and new vistas will be open to us, new understanding will come to us, and that's the way to do it. Hmm. Let's see. Um, so Halo wants to know if we can have the various references that you've mentioned. I suppose they're all in your book, so that's probably the easiest way yes. to get them. Yes. Uh, uh, in the book, I have explained all of those. AK notes that there's that place in the Seven Valleys where it refers to splitting the atom. Does this actually have a scientific meaning? I have also wondered about uh, this, about the passage about love directing the movement of the planets in the heavens. Uh, that uh, splitting of the atom is uh, one line from a poem by Hatif Esfahani, a, a mystic poet of Iran, and that's a, a very long poem, and I have translated that part in my book. If you read it, uh, it says that uh, if you split every atom, you will find suns and, uh, and uh, systems in it. Uh, and uh, this was known uh, to uh, mystics, uh, from very uh, long time, and uh, also in the Baha'i writings, uh, there is a tablet from Abdul Baha, uh, Lohe Aflakiye, in which Abdul Baha uh, extensively comments on the uh, what, uh, for example, Einstein was trying to to uh, formulate the unified theory. And uh, Abdul Baha talks about the fact that uh, uh, every drop you can find the uh, uh, powers of ocean, and in every uh, atom you will find suns. And uh, uh, so uh, the the concept that uh, the uh, micro uh, universe uh, and uh, and macro universe all are under the same law and same order has been known uh, from a long time. We have the questions are still coming in, believe it or not. There's a lot of people asking questions. Artemis says, does a person have to be a Baha'i to transverse the seven valleys or can one reach the valley of nothingness as a true Muslim, Christian or Buddhist? Well, uh, if uh, 
if a person can effectively and successfully transfer all the, the, the stages or all the valleys and it starts from the first valley, which is valley of search, that person, her or his search will eventually reach the last valley which become united with the manifestation of God and will find Baha'u'llah. Uh, Julie asks this question. Um, after having you know, heard your presentation, I was wondering if you could speak generally about what this text implies about the relationship between revealed religion and natural religion. Uh, I don't know where that text is coming from. Can can I, get I think she means the seven valleys in general. I I I couldn't understand the question very well, so maybe yeah. I'm not quite sure what she means by natural religion here either. So perhaps some other time we can yes. pursue that one. Yes. Uh, let's see. I think we're actually getting down near the bottom here. Um. Do you care to comment on the concept of seven league boots? I don't know what a seven league boot is. I don't know. Um, the repetition of Allahu Abha 95 times a day and its relationship to the mystical life. Is this simply a remembrance? Is it a form of meditation? Is it a starting point for other practices towards our mystical natures? Yes. Um, can an individual who cannot be an active part of a community due to mental or physical handicaps really be a mystic as well, given this new definition of mysticism? Yeah, that's a, and the statement is another question. So, yeah. um, okay, we've got, I think, two more here. At this, as this, as first time participants to the Wilmot Institute webinar, I am most grateful for this insightful and informative presentation by Dr. Kurosh. Truly grateful for this opportunity and look forward to joining in more presentations from Dr. Kurosh. And he will be giving us two more on the Kitabi Iqbal in late July after he returns from pilgrimage. He'll be going on pilgrimage shortly. And probably you will have additional insights as a result of that, I suppose. And then Giti. Kiani um, also says, it seems to me that according to the writing, meditation is talking with our own soul. Would you call meditation talking to our own soul? Yes, and through that, talking to the soul of manifestation. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Well, that's pretty much everything we have here. Um, I want to thank you very much again. I do have a quick slide I wanted to show reminding people of our other things that are coming up, that we have some upcoming web talks on, July, on June 11th. Michael Penn will be talking about a philosophy of mind grounded in relationships of a high inspired perspective. So that will be a sort of psychological presentation. Uh, Augusto Lopez Claros will be talking about the institutions of world governance and world organization in July. Uh, in August, Susan Monek will be talking about Zoroastrian cosmology. And then in September, Luis Prophet LeBlanc will be talking about native art, First Nations art that she does and its relationship to the Seven Valleys. So it will also connect to this particular presentation we had today. We also have quite a few very good courses coming up. Baha'i Spirituality starts on the 7th of June. A repeat of the course, The Bob and Baha'u'llah, Two Lives, One Story on June 15th. This is an excellent uh, course for new Baha'is or people interested in the Baha'i faith because it really covers the basics in a very accessible way. Of course, I'm sharing happy, happiness and laughter uh, in uh, later in June, and then the promised day has come by Shogi Fendi. We'll have a course reviewing that starting on the 20th of June. Thank you, everybody, for attending today uh, to this really fascinating webinar. I think we've all learned quite a lot about the Seven Valleys and and I'm going to have to sit down and reread the book now with a whole new set of eyes because I think I will see things in this book that I had never expected to see before. Thank you again, Sohrab, 
for this fascinating presentation. We look forward to seeing you again in July. Thank you very much. <laughs>